All Thank right, we'll call the meeting to order. Six o'clock. Uh, any amendments to the agenda? No, none that I have. Okay, all in favor? All right. I get to see us put up ending time on our agenda. Yeah, I know. <laughs> we'll let you know tonight. <laughs> I want to see on the mm -hmm. oh, yeah. There you go. To be determined. We can put that on there. <laughs> yeah. I think so. we don't have to say that. I think that's already. <laughs> yeah. We do have uh, one appointment. I talked with Therese. She wasn't sure if they were going to come again tonight or not, but if the board's okay with it, we we'll just hold the appointment open. And mm -hmm. if they either pop on line yeah. or. Can we explain the screen around a little bit? More so we can see. Can't really see who's there. So we'll just we'll hold it open and see if um see oh, if they can yeah, yeah, there. Thank you. That's thank you. Thank, thank you. thank you. thank you. Appreciate it. All right. So we'll hold that open. We'll just go to public comment. So if there's if there's anybody, what we'll do just uh, make it easy. We do have a couple. So we'll go in person first, and then to um, Zoom second, is that fair? Sure. And next time we can do the opposite, how's that? <laughs> Brian Wright, you guys had a date for the meeting on the Class 3 road issue? No. The Tandy Wright Road? Because no. I had asked about October, October. 1st. I know. And if you're, it's coming on September, if you've got a, if you've got a warning for 30 days. But... I know, yeah, it's, I have the book on the left-hand side of my desk and I keep looking at it because I want to keep looking to make sure the statute is right and then I got sidetracked talking about the Rochester like you did to see, yeah. you know, to make sure that's right. So no, so basically it's about what we talked about a while ago about possibility of um, discontinuing or declassifying the portion of right road that goes beyond like the turnaround at the farm. So right, you know, before the house. So yeah, so it's right here on the floor of my desk. <laughs> so well, I don't think it, you can discontinue it, but we'll go. Over yeah. That. So no, I, I, and that's what I was trying to do is revisit right. the state we'll, we'll statute because there's a whole, you know, steps we'll, and warning we'll, and stuff, and then uh, your person, person, you information. Well, you end up, we end up figuring that out, right? So those people that live in Rochester access via your road, but then according to them, yeah, there was a, yeah. Have you ever seen them there? Have you ever met him on I that? I used to until my brother kicked him out. And they yeah. Kicked him going that I wasn't sure. So um, anyway, so uh, Brian had asked about doing a hearing in October. And he's right. There's a certain amount of days. So I will get cracking. I'll tackle that tomorrow or Wednesday. Well, okay. While we're on roads, yeah. on Gilead Road, the end where Andrew lives. Yep. Okay. That's class three pass here. It's still class three. How far? You know? To the town, right to the Rochester town line. We went over that. We went over that when uh, it, we had the class four. I think it was the last class four um, committee meeting uh, we held. Them. No, it do, it stops before. No, because we couldn't do any FEMA work past just past. Um, oh, she used to be Marsha Packer, Michelle Packard's house, because we were going to do. We did some work up there after the April 2019 flood. And just after, like, and or just before Andrew's driveway, it this is where the class three ends, and then it became class four because you, Chris Allen, a gentleman from A and R, mm -hmm. and I walked that to talk about class four road, you know, standards and quality. So it ends because we couldn't do FEMA work past there. I think it's class three. Because when we had the meeting last fall in October with the class board committee, town, you know, the road committee, um, Carl said that it is class three. And I think you said last fall that it, you found out that it was class three to the, because you said it was funny that that was still class three on this end. And then on the Rochester end, it would, it had been, it's just a trail. Right. Oh, yeah. I think I'm, it's class three, okay, but well, I'll look at the map. And, but what I'm getting at is the yeah. brush I talked to you about. And I did talk to um I've talked to Morgan and let me just write this down. That past, needs to be done because that's a sa real safety issue. Past um Andrew's question mark. Um so I did talk to them 
and about it. And uh, Hazen just got done. So now we're down to two people, just Morgan and AJ. And they were going to be doing some more work on Gilead, not tomorrow because of rain, but they were finishing some ditching and stuff. So I did mention it to them again and just said, you know, if you're up that way, grab the weed whacker from no Andrew it's gonna be you need a machine it's not okay. gonna be anything it's well, gonna they be something at it anyways they did eyeball it so they know what they need to do and we've mentioned it because i if you're coming out i just assumed you're high enough because i know where your access is but they did look at it the other day so they're both aware of it and i had told them that you sent another email about because it. it is a safety issue yeah and uh also um of course carl supposedly gave um suggestions on what to be done to that road and it was right there where, where the plow stops and about 300 feet past that. It's gullied right down where my right away takes off. And there was the town was supposed to do some work right there in that section because there, just above that, there was a water bar that used to go out into the field that took uh -huh. care of all that water. Now the water runs from 800 feet all the way down from the height of the land. All, and it, not right now, but by November until May, the water is going to be running right down that road, right down the middle of the road, the whole way. And Carl also suggested um, kicking a couple water bars uh, into the field. Was that in his notes from their class four road meeting? I don't know. You'll have to look. Yeah, I'll have to look into that. Those know. were the suggestions he made to us that day. Oh, okay. Well. And then after that, they, they were supposed to come up and do some filling in where my right of way is and, and put that uh, water bar back in. Yeah, and it was, and actually, you sent us the grader up and did a kind of a hack job. There's nothing they could do in the fall, but it was wet and it was before it snowed. And they tried to do make a ditch down through, but the water just runs right straight down the road. And I'm pretty sure it's a class three. And I, all right, well, I'll double check and email you because I, I feel like for sure it was class four because we couldn't go past there doing FEMA work. Well, there's no reason to go past there because nothing. It's been turned into yeah. a goat path because right. the. Uh, previous owners for 80 years hasn't let has controlled the roads up there. yeah so let me let me look i'll send you an email and but it was okay. i know that they uh, and i'm pretty sure you'll find it's class three if if not show me the show me where it was thrown up legally yeah well i'll scan the i'll look at the state highway map because that's what we were it's not on. on the state it shows it as a i think it shows it as a it does somewhere between 19 uh i was looking at it today i think between 65 and 71 somewhere it changed from a class three and it was uh i think in 1970s whatever you look at them somewhere one of the maps there's a lot there's a line drawn there and it says amended that's all it says is amended all right. all <clears throat> i don't think it was legally thrown up but that i'd like to have a commitment on getting that fixed stuff up through there where my at least i don't have much say probably because i don't own land past year unless it's a class three then i do have say but right. and i also talked to kinsley he's going to be working on that road i know and he was told that um he had to do the work himself and also that the town is only responsible for culverts which is good for me to know that the town supplies culverts on class four roads mm -hmm. when i get to fix up the roads going up past my brother's farm well on the class four part. we talked to kinsley because he said he was going to do it as a winter project because he's walking yeah. past there yeah so what happened was because it's class four we're, we'll double check that now i guess but that was certainly our understanding was AJ met with Kinsley, AJ and Morgan, and they felt like a couple of the culverts were, you know, they felt like they were going to be okay. And um, so what they had agreed with the Kinsley is they take a look after because they didn't want Kinsley to have to do work on something on a class four road that maybe, but we're not putting log trucks down there. So we kind of went back and forth. And I guess they, they reached an agreement with Kinsley that, hey, <laughs> let's just see what it looks like when you're done logging and go from there. So maybe Kinsley puts it in and they, but they were not going to be brand new culverts. They were just going to be some, you know, something older that they had because they wanted to be fair to Kinsley because they obviously the culverts hadn't been changed in years. So they were trying to, you know, work it out. And um, because obviously Mr. Um, Rochester gentleman. Sedgwick. Sedgwick, thank you. You know, wants to get his property logged and they're going to do the turnaround in Rochester. So and I get, he doesn't have an access to Rochester to go out the other way. So he's kind of stuck. So 
but find out about that class three, class four. I think you'll find it's still class three. And if it is, I want a commitment from, from the town to at least fix that part that's in front of my right of way. That needs to be filled in. I don't want the water running down the road, middle of the road. Even if it's a class four, the water should not be running down the middle of the road. Well, we'll take a look. I'll scan the map <clears> to you and then take a look. And I guess they told Kinsley that he couldn't water bar off the side into the fields either, which is... He has to be careful because this is where everything went wrong last time. It's, you know, if the water bars are right in the middle of the entrance to the farm access, then it becomes... But what we did tell Andrew, we told Kinsley to talk to Andrew. <laughs> Because if it's going to be a winter project, then that's not even going to be a big deal for him. So we told Kinsley to talk to Andrew to make sure that, you know, we knew you were in support of the project, that you were fine with them logging for Mr. Sedgwick. So we felt like just have Kinsley talk to Andrew, make sure everybody's on the same page going in and out. So it seemed like the right thing to do. Oh, Kinsley will fix it up, right? But when it's done or when the water starts running down the road again, I'm going to be back here. Yeah. No, because so we'll, it's got to be diverted somehow, yeah. so we, whether it's class that. three or class four. Can yeah. we just put a um, an action item on for next meeting to start talking? We got a couple of roads that that either need to be reclassified or declassified or, or our what, commitments need to come up <clears> because <throat> there's, there's like three or four roads that I know of that why some things are the way they are doesn't make a lot of sense. You know? And two of them are the ones that you're talking about. They, you know, um, so, and it's something that we just got to take care of. So Yeah, we've been talking about it. All right, sure. So why don't we, maybe we can group up yep. um, Gilead Road with Wright Road and and there's a couple others that we can um, add to that list. Yeah, there was. Because that, excuse me, that was Carl's suggestion. He said the town's either got to do some work on them or throw them up. Yeah. yeah, well, and I'll look at his notes because I don't remember that being in writing. So if he did, maybe he just said it to you guys, which doesn't yeah. necessarily mean he said it to me. So, but I'll, I'll pull up those meeting minutes from the. And I think Chris Fors was there and Alex right Sure, there. yeah. And Alex Carl Rose. did great minutes. So we'll take, yeah. I'll take a look, reread the minutes. It's been a while. Yeah. So I will do that, but I'll email you once I. And Okay, find out that's class three or four. Absolutely. I, th I think you'll find out it's three. Okay. Well, I'm. We'll and then the out. issue in November, when there's water running down the road, I'm going to be back here. Yeah. No, I get it. That's fair. Because it was that's what it was agreed. The town was supposed to do some work on it. Well, it's been almost just a year, because so. Carl said that doesn't he represented the class four road committee. No one was agreeing. Right. I think that was the last meeting they had. Oh. All right. I know. Well, anyways, I will look, sir, and get you the right. map, and we'll scope it up. But and make a date. Time. Make a date for that. Uh, yeah, I'll let you know. The first. The only time I can't do it is the seventh and eighth of October. Of October. That's a Friday and a Saturday month. Other than that, you guys bring your hiking shoes because I want to show you the class four part two while we're up there. It's going to have to be upgraded. A lot of trees cut, culverts replaced. Blah blah blah. All right. So I'll make that note. All right, okay. sir. And tree warden, do you have a tree warden? Yes. Yeah, the and tree I, warden, I think, has to mark trees that have to be cut. I can't. But anyway, we'll go. We'll go. I can't remember her name right now. I'm so sorry. Um, we can take a look at it and just let more. On the tip of my tongue, I can't. Go, I can't think of her there. name. But yeah, so we'll scope it out. All right, but I'll get you the map, and right. I'll look 65 to 71. So thank you. Check that out. Yes. I'll look those up and I'll shoot them. I'll shoot you an email with the, okay. where it says where it said amended on the. That would be helpful. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Do we have uh, any public comment from anybody on Zoom? Owen says no. Lenny, no. Okay. okay. We're in, we're in public comment right now. So if you had anything that you wanted to share at this point now's the time to do it or if you're just okay. here to... hi i'm james key and uh managing the uh buffalo's farmers market we market i just wanted to give an update about that how it's going um uh, it's going okay um we're not getting a lot of people but you know i think that's just based on the economy um and also a lot of uh, produce farmers wanting to just have farm stands on their own property the csa membership so it's not been a, a, a buildup that's been real quick, but people are noticing it and enjoying it's there. But I was uh, curious if the select board was um, flexible in having it on a Monday, because it appears that Mondays are where everything else is closed. 
so people don't have it in their mindset to want to come down because they're like, well, there's nothing else. Why am I going to, you know, gas is being as expensive as it is. It's slowing people wanting to get out in that manner where they're making multiple trips. So I was going to bring up to the select board if uh, there's flexibility to move it and coincide with something like the, uh, the music festival where we had, because the amount of vendors, um, I don't think it would be conflicting with the traffic flow and such and so forth. And that there's, I think, you know, on the other side or there's enough grass space that we could have at least, you know, five or six vendors that would accompany the music. And I think that would get the word out and also would build up more spirit about the farmer's market. Right now, it's kind of like, you know, some people are hesitant um, of returning, like particularly the produce farmers, because they don't want to waste their produce if they're not getting a lot of customers. But overall, I think it's uh, been a positive thing for the community and so forth and so on. But I just wanted to come to select board to see if that there's flexibility. Maybe on next time agenda, discuss that to see if it can be moved to a Wednesday along with the music night. Um, maybe not this year, um, but next year or something like that. Do you have other Zacharias food vendors? So people are maybe uh, selling something that's ready to eat or? we They are interested, but again, you know, because of, you know, the economy and how mm -hmm. things are so expensive, there's the frugality is sort of like inhibiting people to want to take the chance. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, we've had people come as far as Rochester and there's Randall, um, but when they're, when they're seeing more people pass by than stop, yeah. they're, they're sort of trying to, they're puzzled to like, why is there a lot of activity going by? Yeah. But not anyone wanting to stop. So mm -hmm. I was thinking because of the music night and there's people already coming, that that sort of will like sink in, um, like they're hey it's back in town, and then uh, once it, it once it grows and, and and it's you know busy busy then maybe we can move back to maybe a Monday or Tuesday or Thursday, but it appears that people you know they're like ah oh, I don't want to make an extra trip if I don't have to yeah and they already know that everything else is closed so what's the time of the farmers market right now currently it's three to six p.m on Mondays and it, I believe that's the way it's always been and is that what you'd want it to be on Wednesdays well I was thinking on Wednesdays to do it like four to seven um not really trying to cut into the the music but um just having something where at least people can maybe want to come an hour or so ahead of time maybe buy some stuff at the farmers market and that way maybe we can entice people with grab and go meals um and so forth and so on Sure. That could add to that 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 feature, but um, I think that to entice more people to more vendors, um, we need to I guess give them some reason, like an example with like the music event where there's people there. Yeah, exactly. Um, we'll email John. I don't I don't think the select board ever set Monday. I think it was actually oh, okay. my and this is others can correct me if I'm wrong on this, but my recollection when. Um, Barbara, who used to run it, was really just kind of pulled like what other towns have markets on what days and Monday was the available day. Oh, and so she was trying to do it based on not competing with other local markets. But I think sure. some markets that used to be open on other days have also stopped existing in the same yes. way. And so, mm -hmm. you know, personally, I think Wednesday is a great idea to sort of increase the traffic for yeah. both the music and the, and the market. Um, but the second thought, just because you referenced the, the strip of green, which I'm assuming you're kind of talking about this strip of green up against the white church. No, uh, no. Okay. There is uh, on the other side of the driveway, I believe yeah. the town owns that green. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I, I just wanted to, yeah. to clarify. Which, oh yeah. 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 Which so piece, anything okay. on the other side of that park lot near the church is church's property. Well, and they may be totally open to that, yes. um, okay. but it wouldn't be, it wouldn't be the town giving you permission. You'd have to get permission. But if you're, if you were talking about the town owned piece, that's, I just, that's why I oh, wanted gotcha. clarity. Cause I was yeah, like, yeah, which yeah. piece are we talking about? <laughs> well, again, you know, um, you know, there was sort of a little bit of ambiguity on how things were run. And again, I just didn't want to come in like a giant stone into a small pond mm -hmm. and create a ripple effect, so to speak. I just wanted to come in and gain a sense of the community and get some feedback on one vendors as well as the customers themselves. Um, and it appears like on both sides, it, it, you know, the feedback is like, oh, well, why can't you do it on a different day? So I'm glad to know that, you know, I, I have the flexibility mm -hmm. and I realize the town invested in with the banner, but I think we can re-engineer the banner to address that kind of time frame. Very so I, have, I have a question. So when you, the concern about the time and day of the week for it, 
is that more weighted on potential citizens or tourists stopping and and being able to all the above spend or is it more trying to get more vendors there and i the only reason well, the why i say that is, is yeah, i understand like, the point you're coming from not to cut you short but I, I know where you're going and heading to uh, right away it's, it's all consumers that are buying from vendors if i can't get consumers there the vendors aren't going to come well i know a lot of times like for instance someone will say well we're not going to do our farmer's market on saturday because rochester has theirs on saturday right but the thing is is there's different people that frequent the rochester side as this side i mean if you look through you know friday night saturday and sunday there, there's a lot of out-of-state activity that comes through this corridor right um yeah. and it also allows local citizens to you know come down do whatever yeah. shopping that they yeah. might be doing and stop in and, and even though you may be competing vendor wise maybe yeah. you probably see that your draw would be a lot more towards the weekend yeah, I mean that's or the just, music night. That's just yeah. my opinion. Or on a music Band night too. I'm just yeah. just throwing that out there on. Oh yeah, yeah. You it know, can. I, know, I wouldn't be afraid to be a Saturday just like whatever yeah. Woodstock and and Rochester because yeah, I think I'm not there's, afraid of that there's a different corridor of people that you know. It's very true. And, um, yeah, because the example would be like on a Saturday they had the Randolph Farmers Market yeah. and there was a huge bike bikeathon and um bike you know motorcycles etc. Sure. But I know weeks prior there was a huge uh, bikeathon. They went right through town, all the way down one of the seven. So I agree with that kind of track. And, and Mondays is really difficult because you got to think a lot of a lot of people have done their shopping on the weekend, right? Exactly. And now they just started into work mode. It's three to six. You're coming through town at five o'clock. Yeah. You know, not that you don't want to go to the farmers market, but you got like everything else on your mind. Yeah, yeah. Getting home you know? right after work after. I mean, after I, weekend. I would be more of a proponent. I think Wednesdays is really good because it. Yeah. It, it partners up with the music events yeah but a saturday might be better i mean i don't know, just throw that out. Yeah, yeah. i mean you're I probably gonna draw a lot i of think i wanted i would like to do both i would love to see a saturday event that way we can yeah it would be more appealing to vendors i think you know um particularly those that are sort of like not wanting to have to drive further out to sell their product if they're like local method mm -hmm. people that live in bethel or adjacent town so yeah, I have I've been looking and, and speaking all around and getting I mean, some feedback. If you go if you go to the other farmer markets, like I was in Woodstock a couple weekends ago and happened to drop through the green there at the time. And I would say at least half of the people that were on the green at that time were out of state individuals. Yes. Yeah. They were not locals. They were out of state, yeah. you know, because they saw it, they stopped, they wanted to see what it was all about and and they spend money, you know. So I I don't know, I would push more towards the weekend, but that's what yeah, I mean. No, you make I like the recommendation. I mean, no, we're, I, like you know, I don't know. Do we actually have to set a date and time at well, the select board? Or I don't think so. But John, but, um, the only thing I know is that certain nights, depending on the band, right. green is packed. Mm -hmm. So what time does right. the music? Are they start at seven? Yeah, okay, they seven. usually start setting. Yeah, because I know there's a couple bands that are like huge. Is that green gone. being used for parking vehicles? No. Nope. What, what you're talking about, the little strip there? Yeah, a little green by the bridge. Yeah. No, they don't put anything. So that's why I was thinking of setting it. I don't know. I think that they might on nights like John Lock. When busy night. When busy night, yeah. Okay. If it's yeah. like big nights like John Lackard and different things, they they might you park. they might park there. Well, so maybe it's worth James just talking to John Duddies, who uh, chairs the Bethel okay. Council of the not Council of the Arts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Council of the Arts. Yeah. Um, and just checking in with him as well, just to oh, be, yeah. just to you know. But that's then you're not just plopping into his events. Not over, oh, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. but like yeah. I'm sure we could we could get you. That's contact. the information I need, so our oh, right. navigation of barracks. Right. I'll send you John's email. Okay. John, Thank you for you have it. Yeah. But I think yeah, they, they must be wrapping up with concerts. Couple, end of August, maybe. Mm -hmm. uh, so email. Uh, I mean, I would say Wednesdays and Saturdays are probably James. the two highest yeah. volume. And I, I, yeah, citizen I like traffic because uh, if we could get part of the Wednesdays, then you know what I was doing is thinking of extending the season um, up through October. That way, we can attract more produce farmers because I'm mm -hmm. sure everybody by that time will have an <laughs> abundance of stuff, and then going into the fall season. Do yeah. places do multiple yeah. times like? Do they do like twice a week or, or farmers uh, market or is it just a one? I haven't read any farmers markets yeah. in 
many aren't doing great. There's, I would say out of the many throughout the state, uh, maybe a handful are doing well. And um, they're typically ones like the Burlington, the Stowe, uh, where there's a, an abundance of tourists. Right. Um, Randolph, yeah. we're getting, they're getting some people in it and they are all tourists mostly. Mm -hmm. And that's because they're in the campgrounds nearby. Mm -hmm. so, oh, right. Yeah, yeah, so. For just for this season, you're thinking of extending for the season, maybe try out Saturdays for oh, yes, that's exactly a chunk of time this yeah. year. Because there will be tourist traffic through September, October, you know, even pre-leaf peeping, there's yeah, kind of that October. tourist, you know, you get people who just are tooling around on their bikes or, you know, retired folks that look for the, the kid season to be done and are coming through. So you might yeah, snag and then the farmers markets will be wrapping up, you know, middle of September towards the end of September. So then I'll definitely, I'm sure we'll be seeing more people who want to bend, right. you know, in the area, but also like you just touched upon the leaf peepers, that are coming up here, I definitely would like to get be a part of that. So it's really great to hear the feedback that yeah, is wanting that as well mm -hmm. because the excitement on wanting to do it where there's more people, more more audience is, is definitely you know what's happening. So you know, and like I said, you know, the feedback is great, but yeah, if we had a larger audience, it would be better. So I appreciate the feedback because yeah, that's definitely the way I want to go moving in towards a Saturday, yeah. and then we can get musical. Because, you know, I've spoken to a few musicians who would love to come. But again, they will, they want to have an audience there, that is. But if they're not, they don't want to charge a, a price that isn't affordable, you know, for the oh, farmer's market folks or anything like that, too. And some will play for free. So <clears throat> it's good to hear the feedback and we'll try to get that going. So I think uh, after I speak with the gentleman who runs the, uh, the BCA, John Duddy. Yeah. I'll send you his email address. Then we'll start moving forward from there. So yeah. thank you, folks. Yeah, that was good. Thank you. Thank you. All right. We have any other public comment? Yes. Oh, hi, Can Lenny. Can you hear me? Hi. Yes. Um, moving the farmer's market is the best idea yet to another day. <laughs> mm -hmm, okay. <laughs> but I am a farmer's market person and I drive right by on Monday because it's the first day of the week. I don't even think about it. So my mind doesn't even think about it. Um, and I know I've spoken to others who say if it was on a different day, they would be more apt to show up and to look around and to purchase and to buy. So. All right. <clears throat> Thank you. All right. So hearing no other public comments, we'll close public comment. Uh, first on the agenda is we had a request to appoint a lister. Do you want to speak on that? Or? Sure. So there's, a, there's an email in here, right, from Owen Judy, um, just saying that um, they're requesting that, okay, please have the select board appoint. Pam Brown, um, as our third lister at a current rate of pay um, for, that is, uh, until the March town meeting, because they didn't haven't had any takers, no applicants for the advertisement or anything like that. So um, basically, you know, you need that third signature sometimes. So Pam is not going to be doing inspections. You know, Mo and Judy will still do that, but in time, you know, sometimes you you need a, a third signature, like when you're going to. Um, um post the grand list and do some things like that so that's really what they're what they're looking for yeah i had, I had a concern i'm going to be overloading yeah <laughs> pam i mean pam is a somebody who always says yes yeah you know, when something needs to be done i'm really concerned that she would be overloading so did you talk um, to her i have not talked to her oh yeah okay, um, she was fine she um well yeah she'll always say yeah mm. <laughs> she'll always say yeah <laughs> Well, um, unless somebody yeah. wants to volunteer to take them because they need a third. So, well, if, if and it's just signatures not, and, and stuff like that. That's mm -hmm. one thing, but uh, yeah, she's not know. going out for inspections. Mo and Judy are going to start doing that pretty soon. So, right, well, that was what they told me was it was just, just we just have that understanding. Yeah, and you know, we she and I have talked about this before. Yeah, yeah, and stress and oh, all, sure. how that impacts your health and things yeah, like that absolutely um well, she's still got the election stuff to get through oh um, yeah no, it's got a lot of i know normally she's got to put it on her plate so i guess you know if if it really is like a an hour or two a week to do some behind the scenes functions it's probably mm -hmm. fine but i mean if it's 
10 hours a week or something. It's, I don't see how she's no, going to be able to. I think on a regular and normal week, she won't do anything. Okay. They do the Lister card, you know, well, she does some, now people ask for <clears> Lister <throat> cards, but on a reg, I mean, Mo and Judy are there three days a week now, which is nice. They have mm. regular hours. People can, you know, see them and deal with them. So they aren't asking her to do anything other than just be the third person. Well, yeah, that one's yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. We'll be sure the yeah, minutes are clear. Yeah, count. exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. until March 2023 rate of pay. Okay. Any further discussion or okay. all in favor? Aye. 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 And we had planning commission request uh, to appoint Eric Webb for a three-year term. Yep. So the planning commission, you know, first talks about it, and then they they ask the select board to appoint because the PC can't, but they're the ones who have to make the recommendation. So we did. Did you get a Yep. The planning commission did, and it was in their minutes. Oh, okay. um, while ago, and um, he was he's been um, done planning and zoning um, in other town before. And he's a wonderful addition to the meeting. He really understands the whole process and town plan zoning, all that. So it's great. And he's willing. So there's that. Right? <laughs> that helps. Yeah. But yeah. He's... Okay. Just need a motion to appoint. So moved. Okay, any further discussion? Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Some James Key guy. I don't know if he's yeah. but... <laughs> James Key, who's that? Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, request to be appointed to the Equity and Inclusion Committee. And we do have a letter from James. Okay. Second. Okay, any further discussion on the matter? Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. <laughs> Owen's clapping, just in case we can't see him. <laughs> all right. And then next we had um, IDEAL, which is uh, Inclusion, Diversity, Equity, Action, and Leadership. Um, <clears throat> so Vermont's... Uh, invitation for Bethel to join their inaugural uh, meeting that they're having. Sounds like from talking with Therese that you were interested, but may have a schedule conflict? Uh, yeah, I have a conflict. Their inaugural day, uh, their kind of launch date on October 26th, but I would, so I'd, I'd be interested in representing the board, but Therese and I had kind of talked about maybe having somebody still there representing Bethel on that day since I can't be there. So um, are we thinking a, another we, select board member or somebody from the committee that day or? We reached out to Christy Fry because and asked her and and um, because last time, well, when Owen was in last time with Mr. Young, he was telling me how busy he was. So we asked Christy and um, she was going to, she was excited about it and was gonna talk to the equity inclusion committee about it and check her schedule and get back to us. Cause we were wondering if maybe <clears throat> doing both, like seeing if Christy um, and Lindley, like, so there's like someone from the select board and someone from the EIC, you know, kind of doing it together. And that way they attend together or, um, you know, cause it seems like there's just going to be a lot of information and a lot of stuff. Whereas if there's two people, I think it might be helpful, but, um, but it was interesting anyways, we had, um, because the partners are, you know, BLCT and, and um, I think part of it was we had reached out to VLCT after, I think I maybe had sent some information on, and I can't remember now, but anyways, about starting the equity inclusion committee. And they reached out to us because we, they were excited that Bethel had, you know, taken initiative. And I guess that's how we got on the radar. And I, I'd also sent you the information, right, Owen, about joining the state board because they were looking for somebody and are looking for several people. So um, anyway, so it, it's, it was a, I think it's a good opportunity. <clears throat> Bethel. It was nice of them to invite us specifically to be, you know, kind of the inaugural members. So 
So at this point, you don't need anything from the select board other than no we were just it was just a discussion okay. because um just to kind of let you know we had got the invitation and that dr lindley and christy was going to talk to the ic when is your next meeting owen <clears throat> um we're meeting tomorrow night and it is on our agenda um oh, sweet. christy yeah christy did uh let me know about that and she really wants to be able to do it she just um you know she works at Middlebury college and things are a little bit bananas at the beginning of the year, oh. but I think she really wants to be able to. So that oh, would be good. awesome. Yeah. Yeah. That, that would be great. Oh, good, good, good. Yeah. Right. Um, so yeah, we'll meet I tomorrow and I'm sure we'll get back to you after that. That's sweet. Thank you. Yeah. So I mean, it was a great opportunity though, wasn't it? I mean, I liked the information that they had and I think, didn't mm -hmm. I forward you the email from Susanna originally? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, good. I have that email. Yeah. I think it's really awesome. And it's just, I think it's yeah. one of those moments where Bethel is, you know, landing itself on the map because of the work that we're doing here um, at a statewide level. And it's super exciting. So, yeah. And I think yeah. there'll be, I mean, they talk about there's grant money that towns mm -hmm. will be eligible for grant money. And also too, I know, I mean, there's a lot, this covers a lot. If you look at it, tourism, um, school curriculum, I mean, housing, health equity. So there's a lot of topics. So I think they will be, um, that's why, you know, to me, the idea of a couple people was good because there's going to be a lot of possible ground to cover and information to look into and possible grant opportunities and things like that. So, but thank you for putting on your agenda. All right. Okay. Any further discussion? Okay. Hear none. And then we had started at the last, um, meeting uh, which will just be an ongoing discussion probably up until budget time at some point um is just you know what we want to do with the constable um constables constable <laughs> <laughs> so um you know i saw one of them i couldn't tell you who one of them at 6 30 on a saturday morning and all yeah. i could think was who else is driving through Bethel at 6 30 <laughs> on a saturday morning very much <laughs> you. Was probably awesome. i was walking <laughs> And, it's yeah. Wild, yeah. and I didn't get pulled over, so that was good. <laughs> yeah, and, and and again, you know, for anybody that hasn't been a part of the discussion that may be in the audience tonight, I mean, our we started it last um, September, October during budget season was just kind of, you know, the promise to the um, to the citizens has been that we would provide 20 hours of service in the community um, a week. And and we used to have the luxuries of sharing a hospital with two other towns. Um, and then we had the, then for a while we were sharing a hospital with one other town, 50, 50. And then, you know, now we have two part-time constables that fill time when they have it. Mm -hmm. um, so <clears throat> as a board, we kind of felt like we have kind of failed with our commitments of the 20 hours of service, but just like with all the other landscape that's happened in the last couple of years is, you know, to find, you know, a uh, part-time fully certified <clears throat> constable is very, very difficult. Um, so, you know, the conversation became, you know, can we share with somebody locally? Do maybe we have to hire somebody full-time so that we can actually get somebody, you know, accredited to want to come to? Um, or do we look at, you know, um, moving it out to another service like county sheriffs or, um, so that's kind of the last meeting what we did because we just didn't want to get the cart in front of the horse too much is just the board had identified we just put into groups of you know what are our realistic options for the town not we didn't get into any details it was just big options so <clears throat> so we had determined that <clears throat> the first option is to do what we're doing um stay with a part-time constables or constables whenever we can get them um which, you know, as you can see at the budget lately is, you know, only a couple hours a week right. yeah. of coverage and on odd hours. Mm -hmm. um, we also looked at the, um, like, uh, hiring somebody full-time. Um, obviously, that comes with more hours, but it's, it's challenging to hire somebody on a part-time when all the agencies around us are hiring full-time big wages. <clears throat> um, and then we kind of talked about a little bit you know, a potential, you know, how much that might 
costas <clears throat> um we we had thrown up there at that point was another option was to create a police department and then um another option is to outsource the coverage um, in the past we've looked at different things from uh, vsp uh, vermont state police uh, sheriff's department we've talked with royalton in the past um and then the fifth option was to do nothing so don't, don't offer any don't all. offer anything but we also have to understand if we didn't offer anything we would at least have to um, have an animal control individual that's either appointed or we hire out or whatever because we have to at least perform that service so um, once we got done throwing all those against the wall we came up with four options we threw out the police department option right right it just to, you know to get it's not just have one individual full time, but then, you know, you're in charge of, you know, all the trainings, all the administrative, all the, so it's a very big ticket item um, for a small community. So we mm -hmm. just decided we don't even have a building. So uh, we just decided that, that probably wasn't a likely option at this point. So right now we're kind of looking at the four options that we have left there. Um, Therese had was going to look at Randolph just to yeah. Randolph mm -hmm. for anybody that didn't know we don't know the exact date we're thinking somewhere around 2018 I think so they 18, 17, 18. they I don't know if they voted or how they, they did it but they, they voted they, they, they dissolved just, their police department in town and they have Orange County sheriffs that do mm -hmm. um the community policing now yeah um so sweet I did Therese had reached Trevor. out to them to see how that process is going and what that might look like. Which... Yeah. So he just got back to me tonight actually and said that he spoke to their primary contact at Orange County Sheriff's Department, but any before after statistical differences. And he said they haven't really measured it in that terms. They kind of focus on the quality of service and how they interact, you know, with the, with the Sheriff's Department. And he said the town, general feelings, the town's well served. Um, by the contract and that the level of service inside the police district is similar to or better than before. And the contract was unanimously renewed for another three year term by the board, uh, by the Randolph Select Board earlier this summer. He said communication has been very good, that they, the Sheriff's Department has been great at responding to the quality of life policing issues that pop up. They're visible and engaged. And he thinks that helps with the public's level of comfort with the service. Um, he said, from a management standpoint having had police departments under town umbrellas before um there's definitely a real benefit to the contract model which i completely agree to because he's like he's either talking about service um you know or structure because they own the building so he's like literally you know building sense so you know because it's what i said before the employee management components from union negotiations relationships through to recruitment retention and training it's all handled by the sheriff's department and he said that billing and is timely and clear and and that he said um, they also provide the police services for the areas of Randolph that are outside of the police district, but those are limited to just speed and traffic enforcement. So, you know, they have a pretty good size budget for their contract, you know, 300 over 300 grand. But um, and then I saw another 25. That must be the service they provide outside of the district. Um, and so Rochester had also, I had emailed Frank Severy and then I haven't heard back from him yet. He had given me the data and I'd written it down and, uh, I remember telling Chris about it, but I guess I can't, but now I can't remember what it was, but they pay like, you know, a few thousand, they get like 12 hours a week and from the Windsor County Sheriff's and they're very happy with them in Rochester. So, um, you know, we, we had approached the VSP when Lieutenant Kessler was in charge of the VSP. And we were, that was around 43 to 45,000 for 20 hours of service. But they, at the time, were they having a shortage. They either. couldn't yeah. commit. And now um, a retired officer's wife was just telling me that there, an email just went out yesterday that Governor Scott or just went out recently that Governor Scott issued an executive order allowing retired troopers to go to come back i'm not sure what is that to come are. back as vsp or could they come back in a different form i don't know it sounds could they come like, back as a constable i maybe i don't know but it sounded like come <laughs> back as, it sounds like come back as vsp <laughs> oh um because um so you know because and there's such a police shortage but they also had a you either had 20 years or a mandatory retirement at 55 and 
it was a lot of people in 55 that are, were still able to work that wanted to, but they had that mandatory retirement. So mm -hmm. I'm not sure if the parameters are within so many years of retirement or what, but, um, so we're not, I mean, it's an uphill battle. Well, I know in the past, someone certainly, you know, we've gone through this exercise probably every other year for seven years I've been on the board and we're, we're always, when, it, when we talk about outsourcing, identities will, will have no problem giving us a figure to use for our budget, but then they can never commit to what the service will be. Mm -hmm. And that's been the challenges, you know, like, you know, Windsor County Sheriff's one year, we got something from them, VSP, you know, we even talked to Royalton at one point, you know, yeah. but, but then once you start talking about the service that you want provided, then yeah, well, you know, yeah. this is budgeted for 20, but we don't know if we could get you 20, maybe you get eight. And Royal, you know, so then very short staffed right now. They have just two, I think Oscar yeah. and Loretta, there was rumor they were hiring. Yeah, they're short else, one right now. Has Bethel ever had the sheriff's department or always just had a constable? Not in my lifetime. You could have traded the dump for a police service. Yeah. <laughs> I know. It may not be wrong there. <laughs> did, I did research. Well, we yeah. had to talk to Loretta. I had that thrown she's in. She's interested in doing yeah. more, but she's right now, like last I knew, it was just. And that's been the challenge is we've had those discussions, but yeah. Yeah. And, and the tough thing too is the. Hang on, Lenny. The accreditation. <clears throat> the ongoing trainings and a lot of the behind the scenes things are so, so cumbersome now. So even having a constable or anything linked to the town office, there's a lot of extra work that has to be done to stay up yeah. speed. So and Lenny had a comment well, on. I just, I have a question right now, because we only have the constable is like 20 hours or less. Um, if something happens and a citizen of Bethel calls for the police, who are they calling? They're calling 911, so their state police will dispatch someone oh, to, yeah. right. to you. I mean, it may take a while because they're short staff, so they're depending on the coverage. But of course, they'd also would dispatch anyone, you know, if it was a real serious, they would look for somebody right. else in the area, sheriffs mm -hmm. or anybody like that. So when a Bethel resident dials 911, it's state police it that's dispatching everything. everybody, the constable and yeah. the VSP, and I assume the sheriffs too. And, and you know, and Traditionally here, at least since I've been in the town 15 years, they traditionally it's, you know, the constable for the most part has, and we have, you know, uh, Teresa had put the, the constable's powers and qualifications oh, yeah. sheet here, but, you know, we had, um, you know, usually for the most part, even though, you know, our most up-to-date constables have the power to do pretty much everything if they're yep. accredited because now it right. becomes an accreditation well, yeah, where okay. years ago the constables didn't have to have an accreditation so they right. couldn't do a lot of the functions they were already automatically like if a certain call went out then that had to go to vsp or something that was accredited but now that the accreditations are if i remember right off, yeah. talking to oscar they're the same yeah well they have yeah you have to be at least part-time certified yeah. to be a constable now and so there used to be a big big trade-off of yeah. you know when you called 911 because you call 911 mm -hmm. no matter what right and then that goes out to dispatch and then if it was something that if they know like for instance i'll make it up if oscar's on duty and he's a fully credited officer if if a if it goes out and he's on duty he'll get that call as well right um so his response time might be faster than the vermont state police and mm -hmm. i remember the um the residents that we had here a month ago mm -hmm. with the instance that they were having on their private road remember yeah. she said that yeah, it yeah. took like 25 minutes for them to get there you know yeah. because you never know where they're going to be at vsp yeah. um but um it, most of the most of what we've had the constables and i was looking through the sheet over it since i've been on the board is you know most of it's been um traffic enforcement um and then the community presence, which is either at the school or in the downtown, um, working, you know, in and around the businesses, because there for a while we had some issues with some loitering and, well, um, it never goes away, but we had, at one point we had a lot of loitering and other conduct that was going on. Um, and, you know, the animal, believe it or not, animal um, piece of it is usually kind of heavily weighted uh, if there's any type of animal dispute dog related it goes out to that um but even 
even Oscar and a lot of them, if it gets into a 911 call, I don't know, a domestic yeah, the- call or something yeah. like that, the VSP is coming anyway. So it's, yeah. um, but Bethel, this was what Gene had asked for. Gene had said, you know, if we're going to know what you want for policing, he mm-hmm. wanted to know, you know, what are the duties of this person? So these are the powers of a constable. And uh, Section D says a municipal legislative body may vote to allow a constable elected or appointed um, to exercise law enforcement authority. So ba- that's what you had done when you mm-hmm. all hired when it started so with Oscar. Greg, yeah, Greg was here when you guys brought Oscar yeah. on because he was 2E certified, mm. you voted to allow him to, to do all police, you know, do that he could do anything in that ball. Before that, I think it may have been well, before been that, committed. they that's right around the time where they changed the law because mm-hmm. you know, before that, you just had to be a certified constable, which part time certified didn't really come with a whole lot of because Mark was a part time certified yeah. police. Officer. And then when Oscar came was right when the state had changed their yeah had little, updated the responsibility yeah. the roles but, and responsibilities yeah. and trainings. But that assumes that we have not voted at a town meeting to limit the duties. Right. Is that correct? Exactly. Right. right. Because that is the first right. one. It says a town may also, vote to prohibit constables from exercising any law enforcement authority. And I also see that there is nothing in this list of duties about traffic. No, I think it says that they are, they may, because they can do um, exercise law enforcement authority. If so, okay. Because they're not provided that they're not prohibited from it under subsection A, which they're not, and that they're certified to exercise that level of authority, which Oscar and Justin are. So, um, so we, so, but we have, or I have, have I've been under the assumption that that was what the traffic control was one of the things that we were uh, looking for. I right. think it is, yeah. yeah. But it's yeah, it's funny, isn't it, that it's not a constant. I, I just right? want to be clear that 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 ups the end. <laughs> <laughs> because if you had the sheriff's department, you feel like it would be. Well, what doesn't that? Or, no, I'm just, I'm just. Doesn't that fall under the service of civil or criminal process? I mean, I mean, a uh, a ticket is a civil. It could be criminal civil, depending on the charge. You know, a criminal could be a DUI or whatever, and, but and I think that falls under that. But it specifically B1 calls out the service. DUI, which is fun. Yeah. You know, or about transport. <laughs> but even, even you know, DUI. those cases, like, I, you know, even with um, Justin or um, Oscar, if they get into those issues, they have Vermont State Police that backs them up on those, too. Well, so I, it's. Yeah, I, I'm just, I just found that that was yeah. curious, and I'm not, so I don't know the what's subsumed under civil or criminal processes. I, I would have to would have to get the definition. yeah the 12 VSA but 691. And, yeah so so it's part you know so obviously it's money driven as far as going to be money driven because the thing about the sheriff's department is at least in my experience, contracting out with the sheriff's department is because they are very good at traffic enforcement. And there may be that sometimes you get some of your money back because in ticket revenue, obviously there's not quotas, but certainly there's, they're out and you're getting, you know, and they're doing true enforcement, really pulling people over, then you're, you're going to make up some of your expense in fines. So can we contact Windsor County? Sure. See, see, get get some uh, rough idea of what we're talking about. Uh, sure. Of course, the other thing that's going to change too is like, oh, there's an election, right? We have an election year too, so like a lot could change at the county level because I know, like, one of the individuals that's running for sheriff, his platform is to help smaller communities like ours by the sheriff's department providing those services that they don't currently do, like. You know, teaming up an officer with three communities type deal that all they would do is perform duties in those three communities. Given that Rochester's already saying, yeah, the sheriff's department that could be so, advantageous. Where, right. you know, so, you know, the you have the election. I think 
And unfortunately, I think what we need to look a little more at is more just kind of where do we think that we need to fund the best options? Because we may not even know what that option is before before budget time. Well, mm -hmm. almost fifty thousand yeah. dollars. Yeah. For. But you also look, you also look last, we we last, spent like uh, what was six thousand dollars. We still have month. vehicle maintenance. We've yep. got yeah. the insurance. We've still got the yep. uh, pension and, and all. No, you know, no retirement. All retirement, but, but no. yeah, but uh, you still got all those overhead expenses, and we're not getting any. I think it was nine hours last yeah. pay period that I saw. You're right. Maybe a little you know, um, two. I think this might be a little bit down the road, but it'd be interesting to look at the. What is the current budget, you know, salaries and benefits included? But then, like, we put, um, is it 5000 towards the cruiser fund yep. every year? So that would be coming out. Could that go back towards? So then does it make the budget more like 60000 not fifty? Right. So, like, look at it from a, a broader sure. perspective. Because it, it was sounding like, you know, Randolph's had a good experience. But your point that they they are putting a lot more money in, oh, sure. into that. And so yeah. our well, experience might be really different. PD. Yeah, and um, it's different sheriffs because they're Orange County. Right, right. and I, I just yeah. sort of wonder from, so this is this is like the bigger ask of, as we come into budget season of what we might anticipate, do we need to increase that budget? Could we hold with the same budget? You know, if we move around the cruiser fund, if we're outsourced, you know, like things yeah, like that. Exactly. And kind of visualize it as numbers that so, are more real. I'll ask them for 20 hours a week, but you're going to want full service. You don't want just traffic control. No, I mean, we would want something very similar to. Well, that's what I'm going to ask. Right. That's what I'm going to say. Kind of what what could all. they offer us additionally than just. Well, not just. Traffic. Not just can they office us the number, but can they actually office uh, can, can they actually right. can they give us the service? Yeah. Like, right. like it's one thing to quote sixty thousand if you can't get the yeah, hours. Yeah, can they fill it? Well, Did you have a going, question? Yeah, if we're going to have this constable, um, two things. One, has the town revoted? Is it time for the town to revote on a constable? And two, I remember that there was we've talked about getting the stats from Roger that he puts into the police so that we know. Yeah. Do we know what's really happening in Bethel? What's really when it comes to policing? Do we do we understand what's happening? Like, is it more traffic, more uh, drunk driving? Do we know? Do we know where we need where, where so, we need a constable the most? What we need them for? Yeah. So we did fix that glitch. Oscar worked with the state because. Um, the equity and inclusion committee brought that up that they were behind. Mm -hmm. And so Oscar worked that out with the state and put that data in. And the constable is appointed by the select board. There's and um so he it doesn't appear to be an annual term. He's just appointed until I don't think you gave him a it's not have a term. I guess he's just appointed until they unappoint him or make a different change. But basically we're just looking for numbers. We're thinking about what the budget is going to be. So because we're not getting, you know, residents are not getting the level of service they deserve now or that are budgeted for. The VSP is tapped out. They can't help. So we're just looking at the option of hiring, you know, Windsor County Sheriff to see or to contract with them to see if they can even give us 20 hours a week. And mm -hmm. if they could, what duties could they do? Because right now, um, yes, Oscar takes phone calls on his off times and you know, he, you know, he's doing the best he can. Um, Justin is also on mandatory overtime. So he's part of the Rutland County Sheriff's Department. And as we've said, VSP is running into a shortage. So it's so, it's, so for instance, for, you know, we just got our budget status reports through July. So, so out of the 80 possible hours of service that we have budgeted for, in July, we only used 25. So, um, and, and then the other question that the board, we were talking about last time, I believe, was, you know, do we, because we haven't tried in a, a year or two, like, do we, might not even get anything, probably won't get anything, but do we, do we put the job back out as 20 hours for a constable, you know? So in your opinion, is that a good or a bad thing? I have, in, in, in your opinion, is that a good or a bad thing? 
if we're talking about a constable and we budgeted for 80 and we only use them for 25, do we need more than that? Or well, do we, well, we need budget hours for 20... than that? Or you know what you know? I mean, or do we yeah, you know, you know, we you know do. what I'm getting at? Because we've budgeted for 20 hours a week and we're and we're lucky if we get seven hours or we're lucky if we get three to seven hours a week and we do get a lot of calls at the town office and the okay. constables also the dog off you know dog warden and um but we do get a lot of calls and we've had so, a lot of complaints about speeding and mm -hmm. that's kind yeah, of yeah we've gotten I'm sorry james we'll get, get right to you so, james yeah. so we, it's mm -hmm. um we've started to get um a bunch of and this and this was right before oscar came on right at the end of um uh, Mark. Mark, because towards the end of Mark's thing, he he had really dialed down his hours before he had left us, and and that was the main complaint that we had, especially in Pleasant Street. Remember all the and traffic Church coming Street. around the corner yeah. and Church Street, and, and um, so we're starting to get those same complaints again. We've mm. also, um, Lenny, I don't know if you made the last meeting, but we had some vandalism issues around mm. town that has oh. sparked up again. Okay. Um, so we had some damage done to some Vine Park areas and um, and the shooting range. And yeah. It? Yeah. So we've had a few things that have sparred up here. Mm -hmm. Got it. Not not to mention that, you know, in the old, I don't want to say the old days, but, you know, before, <laughs> I mean, it was likely that you would see the constable maybe pop in. I, I, granted, the high school's not here anymore, but would pop into the, the basketball game for a half an hour just mm -hmm. to you know, see how things were going or technically mm -hmm. they're supposed to be here for, you know, town meeting yeah. or, or select board meeting. If somebody mm -hmm. gets rambunctious and we yeah. need to escort them out, you know, <laughs> you right. know, and, and we say, Brian, we're going to have to take you out tonight. You know? <laughs> yeah. But so, so we have all those little functions that we forget about that, you know, yeah. that we don't have any mm -hmm. coverage on right now. And, and we just don't have that every day, you know, somebody mm -hmm. to talk to, to bring your problems to, or help, help fill a solution so i think that's found oh. i was i was gonna you know on on the discussion on um you know availability of policing um not enough police out there to police the communities has anyone brought into consideration the yet to be discovered workload um when the cannabis stores will open and et cetera, et cetera. I, I mean, it's a town looking at, hmm. there might not even be that resource even available yeah. because they're going to be pulled in to now police the uh, unexpected that no one knows at the moment. Right, because it's so vague. I mean, Because right it's now, very vague and even the state themselves are behind on trying to even delegate what kind of ideas to put out there for different towns and so forth. Well, we I haven't know. voted on ours yet. So we'll vote on it. And so technically in Bethel out. right now, you, you can't open a, um, a retail, a retail <laughs> sales place. We're yeah. Budgeting for basic things like the vandalism and, and, and yeah. be where that they're not even that available because they've been now pulled in to support that town that did vote for a store and now they're seeing it, uh, they increased their budget just because of that. Yeah, and that's so, exactly what we're seeing right now is the, the the individuals that used to want to be a part time constable or had a split thing are now at a full time job. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. um, and and every agency is looking for people. And mm -hmm. so, no, and that is a thought. That topic is big because we don't know. I attended one of the classes that they had about it, and it's you're going to need another board like the select board or the water commissioners sewer commissioners cemetery commissioners are also the local liquor control so who's going to be on the board to oversee the the licensing and all that if a retail establishment oh and it's yeah and it's you know for like what 20 bucks a year i mean it, the any sort of licensing and fees are going to the state so it's tough but the state we'll makes out on, on locals get nothing. if the interest yeah, <laughs> yeah. Happens. It's going real well. The yeah. When it comes to speeding, have we? I know there was discussion before about alternative, other alternatives to either assist or to take the place of. Um, has any more discussion happened on that, like speed bumps, traffic cams, this, um, things like that? Has there any more discussion happened on that to sort of help curtail that the speeding issue? Because I know the speeding is an issue. I've seen it. Yeah, it is. Well, yeah, because you worked at the bank. You had a good. You had a good. A good view of that when you worked in Bethel and uh 
Yes, in the budget that was voted that we're in now, we voted, we or you voted to authorize two more of the flashing speed right. signs like we have now and a portable speed car. At the time, the speed car was, I think we budgeted like $8,800 and it's like 10 grand right mm -hmm. now. Mm -hmm. So we're, <laughs> so it's trying to decide what are we, should we wait a little bit and see if some of these prices are going to come down before we order? But it was a portable speed car, which we want to put on Church Street. You know, people have complained about Camp Brook. Um, well, once we fit, Fix the potholes on Gilead. Brian will want it on Gilead. So it's, uh, it's right. no, it's something that's one of those mobile ones. Can yeah. we use some of the unused constable budget to offset yeah, that? Yeah, we probably could. Yeah, we definitely could. I mean, if we're not using all of our hours, why why right. wait on something we know the unless you want. decide you're going to hire someone to, or do something different? Well, sure. But the challenge with the speed board yeah. is just a, is just that. Like you initially put the speed boards up, and you probably will see a very short term reduction in speed but as soon as they know there's not an enforcement behind it then the speed comes right back up right. again Get them so, them around. so you got to have like if the constables or whoever we have needs to be working in conjunction with, with speed that boards, you know because um i mean we see it like in construction we put our speed boards up it's kind of like construction zones you see the blue light and you know they're not going to pull you over right i mean they just sit there all day so i mean people know that and they blow by anyways so how, how effective are speed bumps do you know well, it would be difficult. I mean, in Vermont, because you it'd have to be a twenty-five or under road maintenance. So, oh, got you. You can't put okay. them on anything a great greater than twenty-five miles per hour. So they would work in front of the school, huh? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> nope. <laughs> So the state yeah. plow comes down. Well, that's state road, anyways. You wouldn't be yeah. able to do anything with that. So I drove through. It. I want to say it was Jericho. I'll I'll be up there in. in in a week and a half yeah, again, the downtown. they have the speed tables through the downtown. Yeah. And I wonder if that would, if, if that helps eliminate, like you, you end up up and over them with the plow as opposed to a speed bump. Are they removable? Uh -huh. Like that? No, they're, bumps? they're integrated. Yeah, they're but I was a little bit, because, because I was thinking about this from the, like the sort of downtown speed issue. I was like, Oh, these are right downtown. I wonder mm -hmm. how, and maybe it's worth reaching out to, it, I'll I'll try to find out if it definitely was Jericho that I was driving. It through. is Jericho. It was, yeah, okay. yeah, and just yeah. to see, like, have you have you noticed an improvement with this, and or or are there issues that you know maybe we should get ahead of and think about? Mm -hmm. So Owen has his hand up. Yep. Oh yeah. Um, <clears throat> I this is an awesome conversation. I love all these ideas, um, and I'm super grateful for you all thinking through these different options. Um, one thing that just came to mind based on what you were saying, Chris, is just, I wonder if there's someone else, like if we did go the route of um, contracting with the sheriff, the Windsor County Sheriff or with BSP, um, if we could have someone who's filling that role that you talked about of like the friendly face that's at the school, the person that comes to the yeah. select board meetings that kind of specifically represents Bethel but doesn't wear the hat of law enforcement that might be able to connect young people to, you know, resources to connect folks who are homeless to, you know, emergency beds or men mental health services or whatever it is that doesn't have the title of constable. And I know that is like potentially another conversation, but I do really like the the benefit of being a small town is that you do have that like personal connection with the town and i do think part of our role is to connect people into those social safety nets um who are in crisis or who need support and so i'm just putting that out there as i think we could potentially meet that need without having to have a constable no matter how this pans out the discussion we did talk to um how did it come up i guess maybe the trooper or the VSP talking about, um, you know, social workers and, you know, because we were having a, a very specific um, domestic issue and that was coming up and involving a lot of town staff and time and, you know, getting someone in there other than maybe a, a police officer. Sometimes, obviously, the uniform is, you know, difficult for some people. And I think that was one of the issues they were having was the shortage of, of finding that because Vermont right now is in a real crisis as far as they're very shorthanded with 
psychiatrists and counselors that it's a real issue in Vermont right now to have such a, a shortage of mental health services, which is a tragedy. And, um, but I think that some police, but I think that the police officers are, can be versed or, you know, are, are probably very well versed in what is out there for services. And I think it's, it's the person it's, you know what I mean? Sometimes it's the person wearing the uniform that's, that you're looking for is somebody who is very community oriented and community minded and, and is well trained in community policing. But um, it's, it's not a bad idea. Oh, and it's just right now, I know that even the VSP, I think is having a trouble managing that as well. But did you have something, Dave? So I think right now, I mean, we're going to continue to have it on our topic of discussion for um, until we put it to bed here at some point in November. Um, so it sounds like Therese, you'll, reach you're going to reach out to Windsor, Windsor County, County and mm -hmm. see what, what, they, what they could commit to yes, and how much exactly. that would be. Yep. <laughs> um, so what services and what hours they could yep. commit to, you know, maybe there's maybe some way we could partner with what they're doing in Rochester. I don't know, mm -hmm. but um, and see what that route would be. You know, it also makes me wonder is that something that Owen said is I know that Justin is a Rutland County Sheriff mm -hmm. officer and he has the same territory. So he sees the same people all the time so that he can create a real rapport. He said he stops in at the town clerk's office mm -hmm. and at little stores and general stores. And so he has the same and that's you know, what region. So I wonder if that's something that the Windsor County Sheriff. Not yet. Would but that's do. yeah. So that I mean, because like Justin could come out in the election, district. but yeah, that's what they're looking at doing. But knowing that we're in an election year, maybe we don't make any sort of decision until we see how the elections play out, and right. we're ready with a with a few options. But then kind of get that confirmation, or somehow we budget it. So we choose that. that. You budget enough, from, and either yeah. you right budget for it, and either you get it, you spend it, or because I mean, even if we agreed tonight that we were going to go a certain way i mean you might not even be able to find anybody you know uh, we've changed the path that we were went on voted on by the voters you know in times past yeah, i don't know because i, mean, last I think time, i think they, they only went, voted on the budget they didn't vote on where we were going we, well, I, mean, I don't know i wasn't there so i don't know what the conditions that were set up for what it wasn't uh, you mean if you switch from a constable to a sheriff or something like that yeah right? because i think when i started coming to meetings it was another fellow who lived over on river street who was the constable and yeah worked at, timmons worked at uh, Dartmouth timmons. security yeah. yeah so that's as far back as i go as far as how who decided what the constable was going to be able to do for bethel mm -hmm. was it done in the town meeting was it done you know, by this like the board? The ball. My yeah. guess is back in the day, no did you way, have enough? No way you could do it at a town meeting because no, we've, no. Been, we've been 45 minutes talking about yeah. this. Yeah. With <laughs> Thank you, James. Seven of us. You, you put 200 people in a room, you want days yeah. and days. <laughs> There's five people, maybe six, that need to decide the path. Yeah. Tell them the path, ask for a budget. Well, here's Even my more. question is, did you, you would remember, did you used to vote so that you had a a voting constable? Did you ever vote? Yes, we voted for two. Okay, so you eventually, you moved from voting your constable to allowing the select board to appoint your constable. Correct. Okay, so that'll give me a starting point to look because that's a good question. So it sounds like right now the select board has the power to appoint. Well, check just because yeah. I want to look at the vote. Good to make sure we do it right. Yeah, exactly. But I knew Dave would know. But just remember, if we go, if we go another way, we mm -hmm. have to figure out the animal control piece of it. You too. do. You'd so, have to. So oh, at that point, do you go to uh, yes, you <laughs> an elected so, you know, dog, no, animal dog. control person, or do you no. stipend somebody? You or just usually, you know, well, you can stipend them. You can have an hourly rate. What does rate. Randolph do? Oh, well, they have a budget for like six thousand dollars. The select board chair. Yeah. yeah. Right. <laughs> well, so I do, I do think it's, it's <laughs> Make a motion for Dave. 
it's an interesting thing to point out because I've actually in the last year I've had two incidences where I've found a dog wandering up Main Street yeah. with Bethel tags but no owner ID and my only option was to get in touch with Pam and it's not Pam's job well nor can she then tell me legally tell me the owner's information to go find them so then it's her getting in touch whereas if we had a, a residential animal officer who you know okay I have somebody I can call who can come help me address this mm. issue where last night I literally drove into my driveway at eight o'clock at night as it's getting dark found a stray dog and had to go wandering up and down to find its owner it wasn't ideal for me but you know so it's like if we had somebody that is in town then that yeah. actually is helpful it's gonna stop stealing you dog it's so cute <laughs> I will say this to you it's yeah. gonna tell Lindley to stop stealing everybody's yeah. dogs to be able to finding an animal control <laughs> officer is very difficult yeah. there was someone who used to do it in a like a county kind of basis mm -hmm. in Addison County and for a while and we ended up paying because we had a pound in Bristol we paid one of the road crew guys to be the animal control guy, but we also had police officers. So they kind of piggybacked it, didn't work great. Um, although to say, Kale, sometimes you'd see him in the town truck with a dog, because he'd be like, oh, he's really friendly. So yeah. let him out of the pound. <laughs> but but it was hard to find. At least you don't have a pound, which is great, because that was a pain, but you have that contract, you know, with the with the um, country animal just, hospital, but finding a person a is tough. I don't think I'm the right person to yeah. destroy an animal in the language of the law. It's like, well, just and it's not them. them. The suffering of the crows to destroy an animal, not the animal control officer. Still, I don't think I'm the right person. Yeah, it's a tough one. I'll tell you. <laughs> okay, so, so we'll so you'll come back to us with a little bit. Yeah, more. I'll ask Spencer County, and then I'll look at the animal. And that would be control. that. And then we also have to look. That would be the thing. Is if we Thank went you. that route, then we'd have to think about the animal control piece mm -hmm. of it. Mm -hmm. Just and keep I'm it. Brain. Yeah. Neither animal control nor traffic control are in the, the law. Yeah, I'll have saying to be what a constable is to be doing so we we may be hiring but i think chris's point of with, if you're but my, speeding it, is against the law and that falls into the civil or criminal process well I, I mean they don't say I vandalism hope, specifically i hope so or yeah theft or i don't know i'll make a note to look for the definition. But, yeah i i, I well, what's in that 12 bsa 691 yeah, I I'm gonna, have a look and see yeah. what right detail what's in that. thank you <laughs> I'm just, like, yeah, because what's in things. that list? Yeah. <laughs> well, is, right. But they're not listing every law you could break in here. So no, I, I, I know. I, know, I, I might say, you know, I deem necessary, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. The I'll take a look. I'll give you okay. six, nine, one. Okay. Wait. Right. We'll move on to the American Rescue Plan Act spending. Um, at the last time, we we um, made some motions there to accept uh, the generator and the pumps. Um, so we've gone forward with that. And um, Teresa's um, done our bookkeeping for us to show us uh, what our balance looks like now. Um, I do know that I've had um, two separate individuals that happen to live on the same road, but Yes. have come to me in the last week to talk about yeah. gravel road yep. issues. Mm -hmm. um, and one had specifically said, if we, hopefully you guys are thinking about roads with yeah. some of this money. Right. So, um, so I've had two different people that live on same road, but um, mm -hmm. so, and I think we talked about, you know, probably with the rest of the money, trying to figure out where we can get the best bang for our buck type deal. So, and I was a little foggy on it. it was one of the questions I was going to ask you. So with the different grants that we have going on, I know they're yeah. confused because they all yeah. have different red mm -hmm. tape to them. Yeah. Can we use, can we use any of this money to offset our percentage of like Sanders earmark or the class grant that we have there I, I or the water know. pieces or does, well, or do they disqualify each other or something? So the Sanders piece is we can use any um 
it's a little weird because of state money. When you get a reimbursement from the state, you get this letter saying how much of your CFDA is federal mon- funds or state funds. Sometimes if it, it's 75.63% federal funds. So the balance of that we could use towards our match. So I feel pretty good that, you know, especially with the rising cost of things that we would probably be able to cover most of our Sanders match with that state money because they said that we could use DWSRF money that's not federal money. So, um, mm. but I wrote in the amount here that it's three. That's, that's Sand Hill. That's Sand Hill. Yep. The 371,766 in local match. But um, because you, because we accepted the money into the budget as revenue replacement, I think for the most part, we could use ARPA money for anything, most anything, but I I would have to, I think I would specifically have to find out for each grant. I know that I can for um, like our better back roads, those little, those smaller ones I can, but like the one we're going to do here, the grant we got for the three to four year, you know, the scoping study plus the, you know, because you had the sidewalk, sidewalk one. We that one, I'm not sure we can. Christian Hill, we have that Sanders. one. I'm not sure. That may be federal money. Yeah. So it'd be nice to know what those options are. Like, yeah. If I, you came I, back and said there's only one project that qualifies for, then yeah, yeah, I can. Uh, I'll have to contact because we everybody. do. Like we were talking about before, if we choose to do, I don't uh, one of these smaller ones, the money chances are is coming out of the same pocket, right? Mm-hmm. At maybe just slightly a different time, right? um so where I'll, where if we know that oh we can't use it for that then then that's that creates a that? different opportunity all right to I'll maybe do some to, of these if we can't use it for something i'll have else. to write to some people and find out it'd be nice to know some of the rules yeah well we, exactly well i mean because i'm sitting there like uh, and then i was reading up on the um the water information that yeah, you had sent yeah. and, and that, i was trying to make the heads and tails of uh yeah how we qualify oh, don't qualify or what this yeah. that, and that was a the other thing and yeah that's so on the, the uh, crystal drive mm-hmm. project the pump station and uh, whatnot yeah so you mentioned that they've cut it it made it into two section two different two different projects projects yeah does that either one of those projects extend out beyond crystal drive for those hydrants or East East Street or any just cruise no, drive only. It's only to do the pump station, the booster station, and um, just Crystal Drive. The booster station itself is that, that booster is just about the increasing part of the pressure. Yeah, yeah. so it will oh, deal yeah. with coming yeah. up of the hill. And because right now, um, that's one of that's one of the main that's the main reason we can't add new users to the system. Right, is because there, we already have pressure issues. There are pressure issues also with the hydrants that are blacked out. Right, so it'll fix those. Yes, it'll yes. Take, it'll, it will deal with that. Yep. Yes. Okay. Existing water line and, there, and it will replace the plastic line on Crystal Drive. So it'll East be. Street won't be affected, but their water pressure is okay because they're down at lower grade. Right. Probably that's true. I I Crystal haven't seen the, the project is oh, not fully okay. designed, so I okay. can't speak mm-hmm. to the full detail. Well, somebody asked me how far out it was going to oh, extend. It's not. I mean, it's yeah. it's really. I think there are two high Just up there or something. Gonna deal with the booster pump right there, but once they fix that, it should alle- it'll alleviate the issues off those other hydrants because it'll fix pressure for for um you know Royals and Hill Road. So. Mm-hmm. Um, but it was interesting. I was not aware they would divide it into two projects. Um, but, or maybe if you could find out what kind of projects the money would be disqualified for, maybe that would be the easier. Yeah, list. right. Like, yeah, exactly. Like, tell me which ones it doesn't qualify. Yeah, because uh, it sounds yeah. like philosophical thing. I think <clears throat> I'm. I'm hesitant to jump in with both feet for something uh, that's quote in the budget because this is a one shot deal. Um, I don't know what you mean. The ARPA. Well, I, I want to use the ARPA funds as extra money, absolutely, not, and not as something that 
like a position. <laughs> I, I agree. Okay. Mm -hmm. That now we sign in. Now we've got an ongoing commitment mm -hmm. to keep up. Yes. Uh, so I want to make sure that we're we're not doing something with the ARPA money that we should be doing anyway. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, it's it, now. I can understand that. That's a yeah, well, it's about along those lines. So after our last meeting, and Teresa was making the point of really sort of pushing as much of this money into road improvements that we wouldn't otherwise be able to budget. I was kind of sitting with this list a little bit thinking, and um, I think one of the things that really jumped out to me and has always sort of been a surprise is that our our library is an endowed library, so it's not actually town funded. And that maybe that's not what we're using this money for, but kind of maybe talking as a board about do we include sort of like we've done, um, you know, I'm trying to think of a good example, but like where we've talked with the entities, you know, whether it's the Historic Society or Forward Best Committee or different, different town entities and kind of talk with the library and say, would, would it be helpful if the town every year appropriated a certain amount of money and it, maybe it's just a few thousand dollars but it goes back into the endowment to help support it because i think we we know and understand what inflation is doing and how things were set up where interest rates actually did help fund from endowments is not the reality anymore and as a town that is a public asset it's not necessarily town owned but can the town look at a more sustainable, longer term way of supporting it and keeping it, and then maybe even improving it. I think that's one of the downfalls, you know, not not dissimilar from the um, from the farmer's market is users don't be go because it's not very robust and that perpetuates a bad situation. We're members of the Kimball Library because it's better mm -hmm. and it's stronger. And I would love to be able to throw that same support behind our our library and be able to have the same resources that Randolph can offer as a bigger town here. And, and that, what that might take is more of a partnership. So just something that I, I would hate to see this, this fall off the list and we don't ever come back and discuss it because we're choosing to pump the money into, into something that is, is a, an immediate need. But I think this is a long-term need that we could lose a, a very valuable public asset if we aren't forward thinking They got about a little it. bit of ARPA money, like 12 or $1,400. But do you think that's something they could go to the, your committee? Uh, it probably doesn't fall under the, the umbrella, but I think we just increased our, our budget for the library. And doubled it. And, and yeah. To like 5,000 or something. And 25 then, to 5. And yeah. then they kept it at that. They did it and one they year held for it. computers and then yeah. they held yeah. it the following year. But. So, but, I mean, even yeah, though well, I, good, probably that amount isn't unfortunately, enough, but the plight of the library is, it's, you know, they're swimming upstream right now. Mm -hmm. with, it's true. But they but the services they provide by mm -hmm. having computers available for people to come in and use is a, in a, an expanding area. Our library isn't set up for this, but the exact reason that we're members at Kimball is our library isn't hooked up to the state's digital audio library. It so we can now. get free audio books through Kimball that we can't oh, get audio. through ours. And it's through the state. It's something that our library could access, but they can't at this point. They're just not. They're not set up to be more in the digital era, and so I, I think that they're even more so swimming upstream, right? They're they're sort of stuck in their in, in an older system where they could actually meet a, a newer generation's need and interests, but we're not we're not quite there yet. So just kind of thinking about it from that perspective, and I, I had forgotten that we did increase. Can, you could reach out yeah. to Kathy Day or Lisa Cunningham out there, but you know, Lisa's a library trustee and, you know, have a, get the feel for, you know, see what she's, what are they thinking? What's their plan? What's their whatever? I did, Maybe they I have, did have a conversation with Kathy not too long ago, but they have just recently gotten in, into the interlibrary loan system. Which is, yeah. It's another which whole. is, um, and it wasn't a financial issue. I don't know why they hadn't been in doing it a long time before. However, uh, well, they have to pay the, somebody has to pay the postage for shipping the books from whatever library to whatever library. Uh, but they, 
she also mentioned that this is that this is an outlier in terms of being a private, not a public library, right. <laughs> not a publicly owned library. Uh, I couldn't agree with you more. I think that that's something that a town should have. But that's so. In terms of the the ARPA funds, could yeah, find could you the um with right. the commitments that we have with grants right yeah. now, could you maybe do a spreadsheet up that shows yeah, it's out of here are the here are the grants that we have, and then here's the matching money we need to come up with by I did already by that and well and well because it's not just that, but I'm trying to think of like. We also have to figure out as a board what we're going to do with the water, right? Mm -hmm. So this next sure. project we do right now, if we were to do it as is, we probably would have to seek taxpayer money to do it, right? right. You know, but I'm just, and you know, again, it's kind of also look at the capital. Is there opportunities to offset that so you don't have yeah. to do tax? You know, yeah. <clears throat> I'll also look at the capital road budget too, so it'll give us a better idea of something that we can take from ARPA, what we can, what we can't, and then where the money's going. Because I know a lot of people, you know, I, I completely understand Gene and Lindley, where you guys are coming from, like, can we do one-time things that would improve our community? But we also have to accept, you know, understand that we're in hyperinflation right now and people aren't going to want to see their taxes go up to fund a water line, right? Yeah, right? So if we could offset that, mm -hmm. I mean, would that be the best benefit at that point? But right. um yeah, and I think my my argument was less on the using this this money for the library now, but maybe looking as a board, looking at and and working with the library to make sure that they're sustainable into the future. That if their endowment really is dwindling and can't sustain them, is the town is the town doing something to help? And and maybe their increased budget. I think I think there's an opportunity. Well, I think you have to ask them because I've yeah. never heard anything or seen my, financials about their. My idea would be to take that library and add on to the school and make it a one big library. Like, why wouldn't you just have one library instead of two libraries? Like, you could make that a public. Public, you know. I'm sure there's funds out there to be used for that. You know, it's it's in the village area, so it's not like you're outside the village area where people might not be able to access it. But... I think there's opportunities. I mean, that's right. Well, I'm just saying it's better part. You know, <laughs> Is that you know, a little bit? It seems to be so. accessibility sure the building. All righty. And then, uh, well, phase two of the water project uh, talked a little bit about it, but so yeah, this is a <laughs> okay. So the draft intended use plan has come out late, it normally comes out. Um, in April, and we would have had hard. No, we would have had better numbers by now, but it didn't. So that's the intended use plan. So they split our project, as I outlined, in two pieces: the well house, the which is the one on Pleasant Street, mm -hmm. the booster pump station, and AC main is shown in the fundable range at seven hundred and fifty thousand. But for some reason, uh, they're not showing any eligibility for us for a disadvantaged subsidy. So that's one of the comments that Aldrich and Elliott is submitting to the state already has said, hey, why doesn't Bethel qualify for, you know, any disadvantaged subsidy? Then the distribution portion is shown at $850,000. That's, you know, um, Sand Hill, Graham Street, Bicentennial, Highland Ave. Mm -hmm. And that is eligible for $425,000 of um loan forgiveness but because it's a lead service line so the interesting thing here is we won't actually know how much subsidy we can get until the project is over right because the lead subsidy is based specifically on construction how much we take out what we put in and that is funded 100 percent. now um wayne said that when tim did this last project he said he was actually pretty spot on about how much you guys had and so you know the four hundred twenty-five thousand, you know could be could be a good number for us um but again you don't know until it's over then the other thing he said was our congressional earmark might actually hurt us 
because he said it may reduce the amount of funding that we get on um, the well house booster pump portion or change our eligibility because when they calculate your disadvantaged subsidy, they calculate it based on, you know, median income to your project costs and your water rates. So if you have this other pot of money, you're not, that's a portion of the project that's not going to affect the rates. So he said it may affect. Um, Can they calculate it either way? If we use the yeah, congressional earmark or not? Like I'm not sure. I mean, couldn't we just say we're not going to accept the congressional earmark? Like we probably. Because it's actually going to put us in a worse position. But us. thank you, Sanders. Yeah. <laughs> like, Our project. Like, come on. I know. It's, it's, it's yeah. not. It's, it's unreal. And again, he also says that the disadvantaged subsidy is calculated a year after the project ends. So yeah. Um, the project was originally slated to be a $1.6 million project. It's now, due to the market changes, slated yeah. to be a $2 million project. I don't think it'll be that high. Huh? And he said in the past, they were budgeting a 3 to 4% increase per year every time you push the project out. He said they're currently budgeting 8 to 8.5%. 8 he said that the talk in the industry is that so the prices, some of the prices are going to come down, but it's no way it's going back to pre market prices but that, it's all going to come slamming down next year and then um so it seems to me that you know the things that we need to consider are right now is that we could do just a portion of the project we could just do the well the booster pump station because two reasons one is we can't add any more users and they may not take that they won't until we move into like full design and we say we're actually going to do the project and maybe even have it out to bid, they're not going to take that off from our um, per permit to operate, which means we can't increase housing, which means we can't because we can't add any new users. So maybe something becomes an apartment, but if you want to build a complex, not we can't. So um, the other thing that Wayne said is he thinks that they're you know, the state, he thinks will come down on us. It's going to get harder for us that eventually they're going to say, you have to do the project. So that's something. And then you say, well, you're going to have to. Fund yeah, it. well, <laughs> well, we kind of went before. Yeah. And um, the other thing is too, we talked about, I said, you know, what if we put a portion of the loan payment onto the general fund and only and the users, water users paid a portion and general fund paid a portion. He said, problem with that is that's also going to has a possibility of also messing up our subsidy our disadvantaged subsidy because again if they're basing it on rates and median income your rates aren't going to go up that much because you're not putting all the payment onto the users you're trying to get some onto the general fund he said that could also affect your subsidy so <laughs> but shouldn't he shouldn't he know like he doesn't know because shouldn't he be able to do the equation and say no with all of our experience, this is the way you should do it, and I'll make it up. You know, you should half a million of it should go under the taxpayers, and the rest should be on the rate piece. And that's going to get you all your formulas. You his know? his like, experience is we should not put any of it onto the general fund. He said that in his experience, he's having a very hard time passing those bond votes when you tell the overall public that they're going to pay for a portion of the user fee. Um, I've done it in another town, but we were also funding a municipal building and we were paying for a portion of where there was going to be a future development, which would have benefited the entire town. So, and Wayne can't say right now because the state's months behind, they should have put their draft IUP out in April and it should have had the final by June. Now, you know, so we're kind of in this thing. They're not sure what they're going to do. Because where's the, the where's the Bennington money at in here? Yeah, exactly. I didn't, I didn't, where they promise us that the we, next one will get the Bennington money. Yeah. So not, who do maybe, we got to talk to at state? Maybe that's that. the 450. But I um, think they should make decisions before election time. Yeah. No. I doubt want them all that. on the record mm -hmm. in Bethel of before it's, election time. Where do you stand on this issue? Yeah. So. Because they're just kicking the I can. Made you note here us. too. We paid off a water loan, so the users could take on a nine hundred and fifty thousand dollar loan over forty years, and I'm guessing four point three five percent. 50,000 a year, it increased the budget approximately 7,250 a year because we are paying one off. But I'm not sure if there's another way that we, I mean, let's face it, if the water and sewer department can't pay their bills, the general fund ends up 
covers the nut anyways because it creates a juju ju from. But um, I feel like it, it's my opinion anyways that we should just keep moving forward and, and move forward with a March town meeting day bond vote to keep the project on track for 2023 construction <clears throat> because, um, you know, if the bond vote doesn't pass, then whatever. But you're saying putting the bond vote with, with the payers being the service? Well, remember when you vote on customers it. customers or you? I'm saying put it on the users because you're going to get the best, you're going to get the best subsidy if it goes on to the right. users. And then what, based on, I don't know, our best math, I mean, could we, like last time can we come up with well i well i'm just i'm just for instance out. last time make it up x amount was supposed to go on the water user right and mm -hmm. x amount didn't right because right. we were able to get yeah we did more than half of the loan yeah. forgiven so yeah. we technically in some ways in some ways they've already approved going to a certain amount right i mean right. yeah it, that never got there so yeah i mean we right i mean Everybody, everybody voted for it to go up by whatever, as much as $17 a quarter or right, something. Exactly. And it went up what, you know, six. Remember, so yeah. there's still $11 there. Like, well, you know, so <laughs> no, but I'm saying, how would, how would you say no to another project that's going to come in under the first project? <laughs> but you know uh, what so I mean? Yes. You know, well, so it's $7,250. Uh, like well, you paid it all the all yeah. this time so so and i don't know what the percentage the 7250 is but i say we stay on track and we go to we focus on going to a bond vote at town meeting march town meeting because the whole town has to vote on it anyways <clears throat> because it's the whole good faith and credit of the town yes you're going to say it's going on payment goes on to the users but the entire town has to vote that's the way it was before we had like 350 right. yes yeah, or that. no but we Who's also the, the users the water users water. pay for the bond yeah because it seems like that's going to be frankly it's going to be the best deal we can get and the other thing is too is if the water sewer doesn't make their payment their bills the general fund ends up subsidizing anyways and i'm not sure if there's a way I asked Wayne this. I'm like, well, can't we get around this by appropriating money from the general fund into the water sewer fund? And he's like, eh, I, I think that they'll, they'll, that that might goof you up. So we'll have to see what the deal is. And um, so we'll have to see how that, how that works, but it's just killing you. Cause you, I'm like, what do you, you you bust your hump, you, you get the 600,000 and then they're going to hold it against. Yeah. Uh, you know, we're trying to get ahead. And then they're saying, you know, well, you know, but we'll also know more because we'll see by the end of September, October, what we're going to get, what the final intended use plan will give us for subsidy on that well pump, you know, well house. So mm -hmm. we move forward with the project. We see what the bond vote does. We put it out to construction. If the costs are super scary, then obviously we don't have to award the contract. But, you know, it's, it, I also, the thought of if Wayne is correct and you're looking at eight to eight and a half percent every time you kick this off, the 1.6 to 2 million, it's not going to get any cheaper. Well, maybe so his, I don't know. Maybe his engineering fees are going up that. But yeah, it's not, I don't know. It's not going up like that. Yeah, so but he it's needs, all going to come crashing down this winter. So even if so, then we're on target because if it crashes, comes crashing has down, to. This we're winter, in a recession. It has to. Then if it comes crashing down this winter, we're still in a good place to take advantage of it, right? Because we would be no, I agree. Already yeah. ready for full. I just, hit. I guess, what I would like to see is I would like to see phase one what the voters voted on phase one and the increase to the service provider and what the actual ended up being. Okay. And then I'd like to see phase two right now, what we, what we would put to the bond vote and what that would be to the, and it might be that way we can see what the total impact to the service providers would be, and, you know, and then. Well, well, it, we're still, I'm still not gonna be able to do that yet because I need to wait for the draft IUP to become the final IUP so that I know if our comment 
to say, hey, why didn't we get a disadvantaged subsidy on a chunk of it? Uh, I'll know more. So I can do it. I just can't do it until I know what the state's going to do. We don't, we don't need to make any decision. No, I super immediately. Make so we can wait a little bit on this. The only thing I want to be able to tell, tell Alder Janelia is that we're going to move, that we are moving towards a bond vote at March town meeting. Right. I mean, and I obviously I'm just one one member, but I feel like that is a clear direction that we're going. It's just the comparison of are we putting it on the users or are we putting it on all taxpayers or are we looking at some alternative? But right. And and that's I sort of I sort of feel like we're mm -hmm. our hands are tied. Like the the state's going to start pushing us they or force tied. us to do this, so we need to do it anyway. And the show of good faith from us is look, we've done phase one. We're going to the bond vote on phase two. Like you the know. other thing you could do is we could break it up. We could do it depending on the subsidy. We could do the well pump house. I mean, that's the part that is preventing us from adding users. So I'm on the planning commission. We get a so we're trying to adjust right. our zoning regs to increase density. And then I'm telling Kevin Geiger at Two Rivers, oh, we, we, can't. we can't add users. He's like, what? I'm like, listen, I, you know, we're <laughs> right. I'm trying to deal with it. And I had already written to Dana and right. Aggie at the state, but I'm not sure you're because they don't calculate our disadvantaged subsidy until out and they've had so much change over at the state. I'm going to have to, once I see the IUP, mm -hmm. the final numbers, I'll reach out to someone at the state and say, Hey, if we move this onto the general fund, can you give me some idea of how much subsidy we will lose? Because they, the, because I guess it's all about the water rates and the median income. Right. Slide rule and an abacus. I figured this out. So I guess I want just to know if everybody's in favor of at least heading in the direction of a March bond vote. Yeah, I would say so. Put it before and let them decide. And, and if we have to, yeah, because yeah, I don't have any more information. Between the water line and in our six hours of constable policing, we're gonna it's gonna be a long meeting. Might have to advertise this one for like eight hour what? town meeting. Oh. <laughs> well be a bring your pie one. in with you. Yeah. You'll need it halfway through. We're gonna serve dinner in the middle. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Might be a lengthy one. All right. Town manager's report. Anything left on there? Um, I did want to to go back to our appointment and do any motion or is that just they they we're not doing anything because we can't do it i just don't want to lose yeah. that that we left our appointment kind of hanging out there oh no i, I they've got the information i think okay. that um francis and sylvia if they got the letter that i gave you they have and it says enclosed as a copy outlining the rules of abatement they can write to the town clerk and i haven't heard anything from them, we gave them two water filters thing, um, suggestions, mm -hmm. and so they didn't come or contact us. So no, I think you're good. Um, so I just, let's see. So uh, Jean, you'd had a question. I photocopied portions of Digging Deep. That's the mysteries of uh, burial and cemetery law that regarding um, green and natural burials. So I did put that, I know they're not consecutive pages, but anything mm -hmm. that was, um, about that I put in there for you because you said you're interested. Also gave you a copy of the documents uh, that Chris signed for um, the sale of the transfer station. Um, and yeah, the wastewater plant had its renewal for every three to five year inspection. Um, there's some new monitoring requirements that are coming. So, Richard and I did look at submitting a grant in hopes of offsetting some of the 15 plus thousand in, in equipment costs, but um, the grant had closed because the state put out a grant in January for this specific 24-hour uh, composite testing. It's like a refrigeration unit and it automatically draws a sample. That's great. But if you didn't know that the state was moving towards mandating that why would you have written a grant for it so when we finally find out the grant closed in at the end of june 
So we reached out to some people to see if maybe there's more of these units available or they're going to mm. extend the grant program. But apparently the state was getting some serious pressure from the EPA saying, look, if you don't enforce these things, the EPA will start issuing the permits, which you know, nobody wants. So um, there is going to be some changes, some necessary upgrades. But um, I did want to say I had never been through the wastewater inspection in Bethel before. And Richard did a great job. There was a couple of things, obviously, that we couldn't answer um, because Tim passed away. We didn't know. And the lady said, well, during your transition, and we're like, there, there, there wasn't a transition. You know, he, he passed away. So, but they were very good. And, and um, but Richard knew, this, you know, almost every answer that he needed to know. So it was really good to see and, and that he had all the information at his fingertips. So he knew where you know, Tim had labeled binders or files or whatever. So um, it was, it was great. And, um, but yeah, there's going to be some money in the sewer budget that we're going to have to for increase in testing and some things. So we'll see, you know, if we can find grant money to offset that, but, but they were happy to hear that we were replacing the pumps and doing the generator. So I think that I don't think there'll be any problem with our um, certification our permit to operate. Good. Okay. And we had the select board meeting minutes from the eight, and I had just noticed that our agenda shows August eighth for today. So. Oh, huh. all right. Um, <laughs> That's funny. I didn't even. So you all failed. I I was <laughs> yeah. waiting to see if anybody was going to catch that. Paul, come on. <laughs> I didn't. Even... <laughs> I didn't even. There was a quiz in there, Paul. Um. <laughs> Uh, the only thing I saw in the oh. the meeting minutes, is, and maybe maybe I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure that we had agreed to increase the stipend for the cemetery foreman prior to prior to the reappointment of Cecil to commissioner. So, yeah, I'm pretty sure we did. So you, he didn't want to be reappointed. Unless we had just agreed to that, like unless we had done it, so we did it, and then we reappointed. And we specifically talked oh, okay. about doing That's that. That's probably me because I take notes. Yeah. Then, so if we could just, um, Julie sends me her stuff. Maybe I. So that I paragraph. That yeah. If we could okay, switch those two that. paragraphs around. Move it. All right. So under the I'll Cecil move. Washburn, if we can, paragraph two should be in front of paragraph one. So the Cecil asked for an increase in the stipend. Okay, so make this paragraph one. Okay. Jean, I think we were about to. We started to, and Cecil sort of said, like, wait. Yeah. <laughs> so oh, we, okay. So then we talked about specifically, it made more sense at board level to okay. figure out the stipend prior to appointing somebody. All right. Well, that's probably. And that's when Dave said, I, you know, doing yeah. it, I think we should do it for this right now. We said that right. we would do it as kind of a trial for the rest of this budget season. Then we'd figure out what we think it might be after that. Right. Just want to make sure that people didn't get the wrong impression that Cecil was holding us hostage. Oh, right. So, okay. Right. Uh, right. All right. Okay. No problem. So that's what I had. Anything else in the minutes? No, I just need a motion to approve as amended. So moved. Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 Right. And in other communications, there was a bunch. So Planning Commission, Energy Committee, uh, Recreational Committee, I saw in there. Cemetery stock. Do you know how the coin drop went? Uh, I have not heard of it. No. Uh, they're sure they've been in. I, I just yeah. Oh, what the coin drop for the rec committee? They oh. didn't. Was it last just last weekend or the, weekend not this before. past one, but the weekend before? Yeah. yeah, I forgot all about it. And I that day we drove north and I went to Randolph and out. Oh, it was just to get around them. Yeah, yeah. it was, yeah, way cheaper <laughs> <laughs> the cost of gas. <laughs> was there any questions? I didn't, on that? I don't know, and it probably small potatoes, but. I think I read somewhere that they're not supposed to have anybody under 16 out in the road. I think it might say that in the, in the yeah. uh, right in the Normally you're not allowed point to have drop. Yeah. That, that was a very small 16 year old out there. Oh, okay. Very small. Oh, boy. Um, yeah. 
Anyway, I'm, I didn't want to, you know, stop and say anything, but I, I think we should mention to the folks that. Uh, I think it says that right in the rules. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's what I say. I think I think it's right there. And yeah, well, well, when I went through, there was just one fellow there and the young girl. And not everybody had best. He didn't have the best. Yeah. Well, he had the best later when I came back to it. Yeah, I did have one it's thing that nice. came to mind. Um, this past weekend, and I know we've talked about it before, and I don't know how we enforce it, but so on Sundays, we have all the church parking that parks on the sidewalk. And normally, I don't care. I know we, in the past, we cared because we had some damaged sidewalk that one time, remember? Mm -hmm. But there was an individual that was in a motorized wheelchair that was going down the side of the road rather than going down the sidewalk on Sunday. Uh -huh. So I know we've reached out to the identities on Church Street before about not parking on. And I think legally you can't park, you can't block the ADA. Yeah, so I don't know. Sidewalk. Obviously, we, we've just talked about we people to enforce it, but it, can we get a memo out to the, to the identities on that and just say, you know, we really can't have patrons parking on the sidewalk because... Um, you know, I've gone to driven by that thing a million times and there's always someone parked on it. But then I, I literally saw this Usually individual that was Catholic zooming down church. the street when they um, should have been on the sidewalk. The Catholic church predominantly. Yeah. 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 I mean, sometimes yeah. when there's big things at the white church, you'll see. No, this was the Catholic well, church. It was, on Sundays, it's the Catholic church. There's probably 10 cars on the sidewalk Saturday. there. So they were actually parked on the sidewalk. Yeah. Uh, but they don't draw as much. Yeah. Right. Because there's no real parking on the street, right? Yeah. Send a letter to so, the and yeah, I know it's yeah, new. welcome. Yeah, I met him actually, and I know it's challenging, but it's well, there's evidently well been a concern raised about people up on the cornerstone north or south of town parking on the sidewalk in front of their homes. <laughs> Oh, oh really? the, the south on south street south main street so, yeah we've actually um the constable stopped we had that issue brought <laughs> he would take it one time to a, a yeah. plank into yeah exactly he did and um <laughs> but um actually just like i think two weeks ago maybe something we had there was an yeah. issue there and so he did stop and the person was there and spoke to me like hey you know what we got little kids here and things we can't be parked on the sidewalk everything needs to be accessible for strollers and handicap but i would why we can't send a nice letter to the churches because usually at the end of service they might have announcements so they could just make an announcement from yeah. the you know, pulpit saying hey sure. i mean it happens every week and i never and then i happened to see that i was like oh like yeah and people i think two people do it because they want to be helpful and they want to get right. their vehicle yeah. out of the road so right. i think that yeah. people are doing it to be yeah, helpful so. yeah yeah exactly so but i also made it a point when i drove through here on sunday that not not to say that you want to walk as far as you need to but yeah, yeah. but this parking lot was empty mm -hmm. and the parking lot at the white church was virtually empty you know what i mean so you could have you could have parked down there and walked up i guess you know yeah. but depending on accessibility so i have but all it takes is someone to make a complaint about that you know yeah true there are no no parking signs so they exactly. can park yeah. in the street yeah point so i'm looking for <laughs> three black board years because mary floyd was out and about as she is a good woman she was trying to uh get people to donate money for the forward fest so she had gone to um uh one of the new businesses in particular down on Peavine, vine it's nantucket you know, perhaps, yeah. yeah and they had said apparently the person there had said that they were surprised that they hadn't seen anyone from the town and so it, Kelly and I had this conversation. I asked her to draft a welcome to Bethel letter. So we'd put into it the town report and the Bethel operators manual. So we got thinking about it. We had them. We have right next door is the people who took over for Dean's and then the lady on Main Street that does stained glass. So I thought, wouldn't it be nice if a select board member this one visited a business and introduced yourselves, talk about it and handle I'll take it. Dana because I know her. There you go. I think getting off of the manual way back in the day when they when they opened, I mean, they'll drop off another one. Oh, great. 
Um, I gave him one. I think I mentioned in one of our meetings. It'd be nice if we had somebody. Yeah. To say welcome to our new, there are like five new businesses. You got a plumbing, plumbing. What Justin and right, and we've done some of them, and they're just barely starting to open. Folks here in town, nice to be able to put a package together. Well, and that's what we did. So we wrote a nice. Kelly wrote a good welcome letter that we edited, and then. So that's what we thought is as we hear about them, and those were the three that we could think of. Justin hasn't quite opened up yeah. yet. And who was the other one? We had the stained glass, Justin, yeah. Cap. Well, that one I don't know. Oh, that's okay. I didn't know that. Yeah. So, Walker? Yeah. They have a sign. No zoning. <laughs> Welcome huh? to Bethel. Thank you. <laughs> no, honestly. Maybe I'll deliver that one in person. Walker is out by the rush. But I didn't know that. So thank you. House. So, um, yeah, that's uh, Merrill. I think the listeners should know. Yeah, right. Walker Plumbing. So, so anyways, yeah. as you come you, in and take a look. As you hear of these businesses coming, you know, so if they don't need a zoning permit, sometimes we don't actually know they're here at the town office. So if you hear about it, you know, let us know and either get a packet or let us know and some one of us can deliver one because we just don't always know. Like, I have no idea about Walker 20, so thank you so much. And um, I'll uh, figure that out. So we can get one to them as well. So yeah. thank you, Paul. Quite a block. Doing some work here in town, heat yeah. pumps and whatnot. Is it Bob? Not Bob Walker, who does play oh. to the well, his father might be Bob out mm -hmm. of Rochester. Oh, I don't know. I'll have to ask. He plays the young huh. I'll have to ask. So, um, Nantucket. No, I'm, I'm over. Yeah. All right. I'll take it. Oh, Unless you want to wait like another month. No, we don't want to wait. SMB's already got. Oh, they're they, neighbors. Yeah, they're right. Hey, I'll do that and you sit in on my next school board meeting. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, thank you. But, um, so, but thank you. So if you, Lincoln's you can, on the um, if SMB already has one, I can take one out of that packet. Yeah. yeah. You don't need to give them a second, but thank you. Was, I didn't, that's nice. We were just trying to rack our brains for anybody else that was, you know. Ready. Anything else to come before the board? <laughs> I just want to amend the uh, amend the agenda of eight oh three was uh, eight oh three at the end date. Does that sound good, Dave? You good with that? <laughs> All right. All in favor? There. We were right on time. Eight oh three exactly. Made it. 